Today, I'm sharing my favorite tip to stop overwhelm with the one thing that's missing from your to-do list, and it's not actually going to add anything to your list. Welcome to Health, Harmony, and Happiness with Kathy. I'm your host, Kathy Stricker. I'm a state patrol wife, mama to three lively kiddos, a yoga teacher, certified NLP coach, and an energetic rhythms expert. As an energetic rhythms coach, I help action-taking women use their body's rhythms and the moon's cycle to optimize productivity and avoid burnout without letting their desire to remain in control alter their focus. And this podcast is all about doing just that and perhaps a bit more so that you can create your own path to health, harmony, and happiness. So come along with me and may this episode serve as a nudge to discover tools that could help you on your path towards more intentional living. Enjoy the show. Hey friends, welcome to episode 72 of the Health, Harmony, and Happiness with Kathy podcast. I am so grateful you are here. It is the first week of spring. There's a new moon this week, and it's also the first week of the astrological new year when we shifted into Aries, actually. So there is a lot of new and fresh stuff going on right now and a lot of energy towards new projects and taking action and beginning to move forward. And with that comes the opportunity to make lists, right? So that we know what we want to do to get all of those things done. And that is a beautiful way to usher in the newness of this season that we're in right now. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the one thing that might be missing from your to-do list. But before we get into that, I want to just give you a little nudge because once you know what you need to do, then You've got to know when to do it, when to take action, and what's the best time to actually do the things that you want to get done. We all have these personal energetic rhythms cycles, right? And it takes into consideration your own body's rhythm as well as the universe's rhythm or the moon's rhythm as well. And there are times of those cycles where it's better to take action. And there's also times where it's better to rest. And in order to know what's best for you and your own personal rhythm, you have to begin to track your energetic rhythms. And the way that I recommend doing that is with the Daily Rhythms Tracker. It's a great tool to have to get started with that so that you can know where you're at in your cycle and know when you need to take action, know when is the best time to do some planning for you, and know when is the best time to actually rest or to let go of things as well. So I've dropped a link in the show notes. You can download that Daily Rhythms Tracker and get started using it today. As I said, we are talking about lists today and the one thing that might be missing from your list so that you can avoid overwhelm. I want to tell you that I recorded this episode quite some time ago. We're talking a couple years ago or more. So a lot of stuff has changed since then. A lot of stuff, but a lot of stuff remains the same. And it's really great information and a really great tool that I use daily. And I wanted to share it with you. When considering making lists or when considering your to-do list, you want to eventually narrow it down to what is essential and what's essential to being done. And, And sometimes that also looks like finding out what's essential in your life and what's not essential, which means that you got to learn to say no every once in a while. But in terms of making lists, what we're talking about today is discovering that one thing that might be missing from your to-do list that could actually make your life a whole lot easier and give you permission to let go of some of the stress that you might place on yourself that causes overwhelm, that causes overthinking, and that keeps you from focusing, and that keeps your energy scattered in a whole bunch of directions. I know that when I added this one thing to my to-do list, it was (laughs) life-changing. And it's so simple. It's so simple. And you don't even have to do anything more. It's going to take you no time at all to just add this little thing to your to-do list. And that's what I'm talking about today in the episode. You want to know how to stop overwhelmed with one thing that's missing from your to-do list, right? One thing. And it's not something that is going to add on to your to-do list. It's not another thing you got to check off. It's something that will actually 
um, hopefully free up some space in your brain and in your life uh, so that so that you can conquer more, so that you can be more productive and so that you can fully relax into any sort of downtime that you might have. OK, the goal behind lists and why we make lists anyway is so that we can get things out of our brain and stop the mental confusion. Right. We want to be able to focus more. We want to stop that overwhelm that's going to run. So we put it down on paper because that's that's getting it out of our brain. And just that simple act, especially um, handwritten, putting your pen to paper and writing out the things on your list is such a huge thing. I've tried and I've done some with Trello and um, other programs that are list oriented. I've done this with my grocery lists. I've done this with my work lists, with everything. And quite honestly, pen to paper always wins for me. Hands down, always win. What do you guys prefer? Do you prefer um, a electronic list or handwritten list? Um, I am just a list maker. I like to make lists. I have lists of everything and separate lists. Um, I've even had planners in the past that give me the opportunity to sort out different lists. And um, and I title each one and then know under each category what I need to do. Kind of geeky, kind of way geeky, but I love it and it helps me. Paper pen all the way for me. I got posted on my desk even, but uh, I still use Trello for organizing other things. Um, but for my actual like weekly lists that I make, pen to paper in my planner. Um, and and that's that's what works for me. You may have another way that works for you. And if it's a device thing, then you can still use this technique that I'm going to share with you um, on your device. You, you just, you'll just do it. Um, my husband makes fun of me because of all my lists and, and because of the fact that I, uh, if I do something and it's not on my list, then I like to write it on the list and cross it off. Does anybody else out there do that? I don't know who I learned that from um, or why I thought that I needed to do that, but it just helps get things out of the brain. And it, it that's that's my reason for it. And that's what I tell him is that it, the, the act of like knowing that I did something and I checked it off means that I don't have to go back to it in my brain. It can go away. It can be filed for never having to refer back to it again. He doesn't make lists for anything. I don't know how he does it. Maybe he makes a couple sometimes, but um, yeah, I'm a list girl. And, and that's just, I don't necessarily need it to rely on, for, but it brings clarity and it stops the overwhelm. It indeed does. But honestly, when you get so much on your list or if you have like five different to-do lists going, that can be overwhelming. Your lists can get overwhelming though because there's so many things, right? We all do it and you're women. There's so many things that we are thinking about in our brains all the time that it gets to be a little overwhelming at times. Um. So what do you do about that? Try to consolidate and um, or the other issue that may come about because you get overwhelmed with your lists is that you lose your list. Uh, I have with little paper on our um, counter for the grocery list and things that I'm always writing things down and then I'll put it in my bag or I'll put it in another room or carry it with me into another room and then I've lost that list. And it's just best if you could have one place to write it down. Um, I know that our kitchen lists are our our grocery list, so Costco and the grocery store, they're pretty much going to stay on the kitchen counter. And um, and if if they're not, then they're likely in my coat pocket or my bag that that travels with me to the car to and to and from home. So I have one place for your list. So all my work lists live in my planner. Um, then it reduces the risk of losing your list, and then. Those lists also, like I said, just get all that stuff that's floating around in your head that you think about that or that you don't want to think about. So like making a childcare schedule for me every month, it used to be such an anxiety thing um, because our schedule, my husband's schedule is so wacky that uh, it used to cause me great anxiety. And um, I've shifted some things in my life so that that wouldn't cause me anxiety, but there's always those sorts of things like, oh, I know I have to get this childcare schedule done or I know I need to do the budget or work on this. And those are the things at the back of your mind that can begin to cause overwhelm if they're not down on a list. So putting them down on a list helps just reduce that. So what's the solution for getting rid of all this overwhelm? 
Well, there's a little bit of a process that I go through, and I'm going to share that with you. Um, and we'll get to the one that really makes a big difference in just a minute. But the first one is plan for your week. So I do teach and I go through a way of planning for a month at a time and using the monthly cycle to plan your activities for the things on your list. But also um, every week I do a brain dump and I just get out all of the things that need to happen in my brain, all the things on the to-do list. Does anybody else do this? But it's nice to dedicate time each week to sit down and to make your, your like big list. Then I sort it into keep it, delegate it, or eliminate it. And the big list may not actually even be that big, um, but it just allows for the things that maybe are carrying over on your to-do list to finally get some attention. And even if that attention means that you are eliminating it. So I've sorted into three categories, keep it, delegate it, or eliminate it, right? And only the stuff that I actually think can get done in the coming week goes onto my list, stays on my keep it list. Otherwise, it's moved to a different list or it's it's like out of, I put it someplace else where I know it's got to get done, um, but that's not going on my weekly to-do list. To maximize productivity, honestly, if you can do your to-do list on a weekly schedule, so much better. Then each day you can pick like your top three things or your top, depending on what stage of life you're in, um, if you have little kids running around or you've got that kind of stuff going on like I do in my life, um, sometimes planning to get only one thing done a day is wonderful and acceptable and great. And congratulate yourself on that because sometimes that's all we can do and and just do our best at it. But make your to-do list each week and address the things that are on the list that keep getting carried over. Because why do they keep getting carried over? What steps do you have to take to actually make those done and to get them to the point where you're taking action on them? So begin to, to look into that as well. But now that you've made your list and you've sorted it into those three categories, you eliminate the things that are not going to happen, that they're not maybe realistic expectations or that they're just not a necessity. Things that you want to do, but are really not a necessity and, and aren't going to... Um, aren't really going to matter that much if you do them or not. And by matter, I mean, if it's doing something that's going to give you more peace of mind and make you feel more calm, then do it. It needs to become a priority, okay? So if it's like cleaning out a closet or cleaning out a space in your house that is cluttered and chaotic, clearing also clears up here. Remember that. Um, so get clear with yourself on why some of those things are being carried over. And if they need to be carried over because it's a springtime project and it's the middle of winter, then put it somewhere on a list that you know you're going to get to someday, but uh, it's not a list that you see all the time and see every day. So eliminate and then keep the stuff, like I said, keep the stuff that you know is pertinent and that you can probably tackle this week and get done this week. That's realistic expectations of yourself. And then the last thing, so the number one thing, and this is the thing that you might all be missing from your to-do list, is the delegated section. We might not actually be missing that part, but in the delegated section, know who you can delegate to. Um, and that means like an admin or a spouse or a family member. So choose those things that you know you can delegate or get help with. But the number one thing that um, you are probably missing from your to-do list is the the universe or the God list. Okay. This is falls under the delegate side. But so on your to-do list, create a sign that says God, or it may speak more to you if you say universe. Um, but your to-do list is going to look something like this. Draw a line down the center of your to-do list and on the top of the left side, write to do or me or something that resonates with you that indicates that that's what you're actually going to take action towards. Then on the other side of that vertical line, write God or universe. One side is your to do's. You're going to write them all down here and then you're going to give it to God. Give the other things to God and you're going to put them on there. So things like this, what falls under this category? What things could you give? that um that don't 
necessarily actually mean you have to do them. And quite honestly, these are things that you could have to do. You could be creating more work for yourself to do, but they're also things that you can hand off and let go of and just trust the process. Um, for me, childcare and figuring out the childcare, I mentioned that at the beginning, that became a huge stressor for me. This was one of the things that I put on my God list. And every week I hand off some things and say, this is what I want. This is what I'm needing this week. And this is the support that I'm needing. So I put it on that side of the list and then I don't think about it. I let it move out of my brain. I don't think about it. I ask for that help and then I surrender to the process. Um, most recently, one of the things was um, Matt was going out of town and we don't have early morning child care and I have early morning class and um, and there, we don't have anybody who can come stay at our house right now so that when the kids wake up, there's somebody there. And so the thing that I, at that time, put on the list was child care for the week that my husband was gone. And it all worked itself out beautifully. And I didn't have to do a dang thing. It came to me. The solutions came to me. I handed it off and I said, this is what I need help with. And then the solution started coming. And honest to God, I didn't do anything. And it's beautiful. And that happens more than I can even name because every week I'm putting stuff on God's to-do list because he's there to help us, right? Um, the universe is there to work for our good. And so if we can actually hand stuff off, it frees up space in our mind. Um, and it, it allows you to not um, put the pressure on yourself to feel that overwhelm of what am I going to do with this underlying task that is there, this underlying thing that's on my to-do list. Um, it releases you from that full responsibility of it. And it teaches you to trust a higher power teaches you to surrender and trust not only a higher power, but also yourself and to really trust yourself to let go of something. That's a whole nother topic. I've linked to an episode or two I've done about surrender in the show notes. Letting go aligns with the third and fourth phases of your energetic rhythms, and they are really all about releasing and letting go. And if I'm honest, phase one is also about surrender and allowing the process to happen. So a big chunk of this journey to flowing is definitely about surrender and trusting the path that you're on and trusting the natural flow of events in life. So just being able to add a column on your to-do list and put God's to-do list at the top or universe's to-do list at the top and then put those things that are really maybe heavy for you, but you know need to get done, put them on that side. Now, they may not always happen because, as you know, God takes his time and there are things that, other things that have to come into play, right, um, to, to make those things happen sometime. And honestly, sometimes my God list gets transferred from week to week because there is, it's things that I don't, I don't have the capacity to do on my own and I need that help or the solution hasn't come yet. And that's, it's kind of like prayer, right? We can just keep putting our requests out there and trust that our highest good will come from it. So anyway, that's my tip and it helps to stop that overwhelm. Um, it helps to, to get the things out of your brain to calm your mind, and to create more focus. Your God list or your universe's to-do list. Um, and it honestly makes things begin to work together. Synchronicity happens and, and you can just flow with it and love it. List making can be a crucial tool when it comes to stopping overwhelm, but it can also be a source of overwhelm if you aren't optimizing the way you format your list. When you do start optimizing the way you format your list, though, it can certainly help you flow with your time, energy, and focus, even when the surprises of life happen. You've been listening to Health, Harmony, and Happiness with Kathy. I'm your host, Kathy Stricker. Remember to share this episode with someone who you think might benefit from it. And until next week, 
Cheers to cultivating your own version of health, harmony, and happiness in your life.